Hello and welcome to the Pod Podcast Cast. My name is Insuling. And I'm Ark. And I'm Jared. And tonight we'll be discussing the uh, high points of Exalted. Uh, the things that really draw us to the system and the reasons why we're making a podcast that seems to more and more be the Exalted podcast. Yeah, we're going to be mainly focusing on the good stuff and why you should play it. Next episode, we'll be focusing on the bad stuff. But for now, we want to keep it a more lighter note. All optimism, all the time. That is our uh, that that is our motto for this episode. Our, our mm-hmm. goal is fundamentally to drown you, dear viewer, in the positive vibes of this episode. Yeah. We're going to kill you with kindness. I am pretty sure that there are several ways an Exalted can actually do that. I, I am. Perhaps we'll go over that in our... Uh, in a future podcast where we discuss the mechanics. So, um, yeah, the, uh, I, I, Exalted is such a fun world to play in, and I keep trying to get people to use it in place of other gaming worlds, because it's, it's a, it's big enough that it really feels alive, and it's also big enough that you can freely add to it, just whatever you want. You want more rivers? Add more rivers. You want a city? Plop one down. It's, fine all the setting material that they give you and they give you so much setting material you can always add to it and i love that aspect of it yeah it really encourages homebrew you can make your own setting or you can adapt to the one that you're at right now like if you don't like a specific setting element you can just take it out it's such a it's interesting because a lot of settings that are very vast very Mm -hmm. wide and very deep a lot of them like say 40k it's actually kind of hard to add new setting elements because everything's tied into such like a tight bow that it's hard for any of the like it's hard to modify things without breaking other things. Yeah. But with Exalted, it's wrapped like it's wrapped in such a way that adding things doesn't really hurt anything because Exalted is already just a bunch of things added together. So like you, you can just sort of fit things in. Like you could probably fit in a few extra exalt types without it really changing the story or lore all yeah. that dramatically. The uh, the world itself, e- even if you don't use the history, I just love to use the map because it's a very interesting map. You have one large continent right in the middle of the world and it's surrounded by whatever you want it to be. And so it gives this idea that everybody knows where the center of the world is and there isn't it's, it's not a misconception. That is, It just is the center of the world. Everybody knows it. You can go there. You can wave to it. It's right there. You can see it from your house. <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember one time we did a campaign where I changed the West into a One Piece ripoff. Uh, th- this was for... We're actually still planning to do this game. It's mm. It's something we've been working on. But basically, we took the entire West and realized that, like, well, we like certain parts. There were other parts we didn't like as much. Mm. And so we just completely shifted the store. Like, we just completely shifted that aspect of the setting. And yeah. it didn't break anything. Yeah, the uh, like, uh, like the setting is just so big that it's hard to really break the setting by doing any one thing. Because it doesn't matter. It's, it, it's so big that the setting as a whole doesn't matter unless you make it matter. If you're not using an entire direction, that direction does not matter because it is so far away that whatever is happening there could not possibly affect you unless you feel like it. Yeah, uh, while most fantasy settings are normally much smaller than the Earth, like a a lot of them are barely the size of a large state, the Exalted setting is several times larger than Earth. (laughs) Like, it's larger than Earth by several degrees. And so there's just so much space. Mm -hmm. And you always have room to maneuver and to interrupt. Like, for example, there's this thing called the dynasty. And it's like the, as he said, the center of the world. It's this big empire. You can go so far away that the dynasty just can't reach you because you're just like thousands of miles away. And who's going to walk on, like, who's going to go there? Like, who's going to go on a trip for several months to get there? Or sometimes even years, depending upon where you are. Like, Like, I'm sorry, I remember the first time I looked up at the exalted map, the map of creation, I'm like, wow, that's pretty small. But then, like, I started reading it, reading into it, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, there's multiple cities that can, like, have millions of people in them. While, like, a regular D&D setting has, like, only a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, like, it, it really expands on numbers. 
and just populations and the number of people that are in the world. And like it, it reads like at first it reads like it's a standard fantasy setting. Oh, there's a city. It's a bustling city with ten thousand people. But the people who wrote this game understood what populations were, and were like, no, this is a city that has two hundred thousand people in it because that's a large city. That's what you should reasonably expect at this day and age. And it means that like as a DM and as a player, you can just like pick and choose all the cool stuff that you like and leave everything else and it doesn't leave the game feeling broken or weird like there's a lot of fantasy settings that if you just pick and choose what you want and ignore everything else it can make the game feel disjointed and nonsensical but it's almost like a lore assumption that you're going to be ignoring a lot because like 99% of people don't really interact with the world at large most people in exalted even though exalted is a fantasy setting with spirits and magic and super gods most people in the setting of exalted have never seen anything supernatural Mm -hmm. like it's that bit it has that much space that there is by canon of exalted several thousand dragon blooded at least 700 mm-hmm. celestials there's so many godlike beings and then there's the actual gods that can like do things and yet despite that it feels like there's so much empty space to use a better metaphor instead of you being a big fish in a small pond you are a big fish in an ocean yeah <laughs> and it and it's a cool feeling because it means like if you want if you're in the south and you want to go to the west okay uh, that's going to be a whole. That that's going to be like unless you have some type of magical transportation or something. That's going to be a journey. Think about journey to the west. That is what happens when you try to get from one side of creation to the other. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of role playing games um, talk about the pillars. I, I say a lot. Uh, some podcasts I listen to, I guess, talk about the three pillars of exploration, social or like socializing and combat and exalted really leans into or at least has the ability to lean into exploration as a goal if you want to go and find some lost landmark landmark in a world where the world itself has power like there are there are nexuses or nexi where like mountains and rivers meet that can be places of power and your character could be searching for one of these and so just the aspect of exploration in this world can be something worth playing and it really feels it feels good when you succeed and you find that that place and you you make a home there and you you are able to harvest that power for yourself it's it's really yeah, cool it is really cool and it's one of the things that only like it's one of the things that exalted does very well another thing that exalted does really well is giving you all of the ammo you need say what you want about the exalted setting but by god do they load up players with power like you the reason a lot of times you get overwhelmed in exalted is because there's other super god things running around but like they they don't like give you a spoon and tell you to fight an army they give you a gatling gun and tell you to fight a legion if that makes sense (laughs) they just give you a, a, a thing called a grim cleaver you might ask what a grim cleaver is don't worry about it (laughs) <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the feeling that other people get when they look at you holding it. Like, oh, that's a grim cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we've been messing around with different video formats for this, with like how we're going to organize our podcasts. And this series has sort of been us testing the ground for that. And so we've come up with a little bit of a more organized structure for this episode. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to have each person in line describe their perspective on Exalted and their thoughts about it. And then we're going to discuss that and then, you know, move on to the next person. And we want to see how that works with video formatting, if it makes it uh, more interesting to listen to Mm -hmm. for, for for the viewers. So we are going to start, of course, with insulting. Uh, he's the one that's had the most experience in Exalted. He's the one who understands it the most, and he has a perspective that kind of stretches from the very beginning of Exalted, like, mm-hmm. to now. While I don't really, like, me and Ark, we don't really have that. So he has, like, the unique perspective of someone who is 
fully engrossed and exalted from the beginning. Yeah, whereas... we're newcomers. We've only been we've been int introduced to this uh, game for around three, four months. So you'll be we'll be the new eyes, while Insling will be more the old person who knows all <laughs> everything. The old guard who complains about things and how things used to be, even though they might have already been fixed. But I don't know because I'm not reading this new book. No, I I, I I'm. I want to like 3rd edition, I really do, and it's hard to hear somebody talk about 3rd edition and not knee-jerk to say, oh well, you know, looks like they still haven't fixed this, but this isn't that episode. <laughs> uh, the the thing that really drew me to Exalted, though, uh, way back in, gosh, I, I started playing it in 1st edition with uh, some friends back in high school, just to date myself, and uh, I think one of, one of my friends bought the core book. And then, I know I bought the Sidereal book when it first came out. Like, like first week that it came out. So, like, I've been at this for a while. And the thing that really drew us was kind of the mission statement of the game. Of, you are a hero of a forgotten age. And we are encouraging you to go and be a hero. Go do it. Go, go be amazing. You want cool artifacts? Here, have them. Uh, I'd been playing D and D, and I'd been playing uh, White uh, World of Darkness games for so long, and just basically having to fight rats or be told that I uh, I, I was you know oh your character is nothing in this setting. You're surrounded by people more powerful than you, and so when Exalted came out, I just latched onto it and said yes this yes please this is what I want. Give me my giant golden sword that just oozes sunlight. And let me go cut down bad things. Let me go fight the bad guys and have a chance. Not even a chance. Let the bad guys be worried that I'm going to show up. And prepare for that by not being there when I get there. You know, make it a chase instead of bad guys being in a lair and going, Oh, ho, ho, ho. You, you thought you could stop us? Ho, 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 ho. That's awful. I, I'm tired of that. Like, everybody is a hero according to their book. Like, and when I say that, I mean that each, each of the, uh, we, we've gone over briefly the splats. You know, you want to be a solar? Here, have the core book. It tells you that you're a hero. You want to be one of the, uh, the dragon-blooded? Here, go read their core book. It'll tell you that you're a hero from, from your perspective. And they, they all kind of tried to color in how you might see the world as whatever you are. You know, whatever, whatever, basically whatever color hero you are. You know, do you want to be a, a red hero? Then you're a fire aspect. <laughs> do you want to be a gold hero or a silver hero? And uh, each, each of them had their own powers. And oh, they had so many powers to choose from. Ca which brings me to character creation. Character creation was fun. It, it still is fun. Sometimes I'll still crack open the, uh, the second edition books. And maybe even the third edition book. And just make a character. Uh, you can pour over for a while, and none of the powers are really gated behind having to be a non-player character to have. They're all kind of built with the idea that players are supposed to have these. These are your tools. These are how you interact with the world. And the powers weren't just how to hit things better or harder. They were powers that let you affect people and the world around you. You could pick up a ruined object and instantly repair it which had all kinds of applications. You could, you could, uh, you could arrange for angry mobs to form around you into, into a military unit or into a social unit. You could just get a bunch of sycophants off the streets to just agree with you while you're trying to shout somebody down and make your uh, political movement. And like, in, in a lot of games, like the antagonists are supposed to have the, the magic powers that you know you need you need you need to go find the MacGuffin to to stop their magical powers that are more be that are better than yours, but not an exalted an exalted core book. It starts you off by saying, "Hey, this is kind of as powerful as it gets, and everybody should kind of be weaker than that." At least initially, that felt amazing because it's they're saying, "Here, have this toolkit. It's the best toolkit. Have fun. Go wild." So yeah, exalted and the promises that it made were great and the core book came with a great setting they said here have a big world have a big sandbox go have fun <laughs> okay well yeah i mean that's a very interesting point it's i uh this is something i always kind of find interesting but one of the things that i always 
find interesting about Exalted is you're, you're kind of like, aside from specific exceptions, you sort of start off as the top dog. Like, you're the one everyone else is afraid of. Instead of it being normal D&D where you're reactive, your other people, the villain is the one doing things. You're reacting to his action. In Exalted, everyone else is reacting to you because you're the one driving the setting forward by being super god king. You're, you're on the offensive. Ironically, you're the antagonist. Yeah. Which is weird. <laughs> well, you're, you're still the protagonist because the story is based on you. But in other people's stories, you become their antagonist. You, you're, you're the entity who rolls into a kingdom, decides that they're doing it wrong, and immediately takes over the kingdom. Or does so so fast that other people can't keep up. And since so many people have never even seen a god or one of the exalted before, you're basically a force of nature in the world. What are they going to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there are things that will stop you. But the thing is, what stops you isn't random dude with a hammer, 17. What stops you is another superhero god. Like, another badass chosen of the god super being. That's what you worry about. Because the only, basically in Exalted, the only thing that can fight you is other things that are like you. Yeah, like, you're not gonna die from an orc. I guess it's time for my perspective. Uh, I find exalted to be such an interesting system for all of the small things like perfect example there's a lot of the little stuff that gets me like the cast marks i find it so cool the idea that you have this symbol that anoints you as chosen of the gods and like anime style dragon ball z super <laughs> saiyan transformation when you go all out with your powers it it sparks up, and you get all this aura all around you, and... You feel like a badass. Yeah. You are full of power, and from the very beginning, you're just... You're not just powerful, because power in and of itself doesn't actually change much. You become a figure of myth by becoming an exalted. So there's this thing, and I've only read briefly about this, but there's this thing called essence fever. Basically, when you become an exalted, you your brain becomes hardwired to want to do things. Oh yeah, I love this. Like This is from 3rd edition. Exalted, an exalted isn't just going to sit on his ass and knit. <laughs> By his very nature, he is going to be driven to do things, to get out in the world and force the world to fit his he way of the active. Yeah, he has to right wrongs and or wrong rights if <laughs> he, he doesn't like certain people. He has to change the world just by existing. And this goes for every type of exaltation. Even the uh, even dragon blooded are like this. They can't just sit on their laurels and do nothing and be like turtle up and play defensively. They kind of get pushed towards action. So like if you're solar, you aren't just going to go, oh, there's this city and they're pretty bad, but you know, I'm I really don't want to chat. No, no, you're, you, you like your brain kind of pushes you to march into the city and proclaim yourself <laughs> its master, and that you're going to fix all of their problems, and they're going to stop doing the things you think are wrong because, by God, you're God King, <laughs> and there's nothing anyone can do to stop you, and that's kind of. And of course, the it, it also says that this isn't mind control, like. You aren't going to completely switch your personality because you became an exalt. But generally, exalts are encouraged to be active. They, they need goals and drives, and they need to be aggressive changers of the world just by their very nature. It's what they were built to do. Like, when the gods made exaltation, they designed it to change the status quo. They designed it to shift the world, and as such... Every exalt kind of has the built-in animalistic desire to force change. Yeah. And to shake things up and to create their own legend, to take fate into their hands and cause things to become different. And that, to me, is just such a cool thing for a game to focus on. Yeah, like, oh, great, I'm an exalt. Okay, I'm just going to live in my years sitting in my rocking chair. Yeah, like, that's not what an exalt does. An exalt changes and pushes and fights you're gilgamesh mm -hmm. you don't sit with the king drinking wine you go out and wrestle grendel and 
And you and then kill Grendel's mother. You have a stern talking to Julia or uh, to what's her name? <laughs> oh, the Grendel movie <laughs> or Gilgamesh movie. <laughs> oh yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but like, that's the thing though. Like, like take Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is the perfect example of an exalt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's so motivated by change and to force what he wants to happen to happen. And he doesn't even have, like, lofty ambitions. He just wants to get rich and kill things. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exalted encourages you to act like a brash character of legend. Because super cautious, super boring, and slow characters aren't really what get legends wrote about them. It, like, Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong's a legend because he just kind of does whatever he feels like in the moment. <laughs> like, even when it's a horrible idea... And everyone around him is telling him it's a horrible idea. He, he still does it. Because yeah. he's God. Or he's a thing. A very powerful <laughs> thing. Even though Sun Wukong isn't even the main character of the Journey to the West, people he's know Sun main... Wukong. They're like, yeah. yeah, Sun Wukong, the main character, right? And you're like, no, Sun Wukong was... Like, the first chapter was about him. The rest of the story was about the monk that he was walking with. But no one cares about the monk, because the monk doesn't do things. He just sits on his butt, has a horse carry him around, and gets kidnapped all the time. <laughs> now, uh, He's a passive character. Imagine if that monk was blessed by water and had awesome martial arts as well. Now you're getting into point. Exalted. <laughs> like, that's the thing, though. Like, it kept happening where the reason why the story was interesting was because, like, Sun Wukong would do things. And so would, like, the other followers of the monk. Like... Uh, the one pig guy, uh, he, he's the one, like, if you've ever seen Dragon Ball, which is a weird, which started as a weird semi-parody of Journey to the West, uh, Oolong, the, the pig dude, he, that based off of the mythological figure from Journey to the West, who's basically this, like, fat, slobby weirdo who's a coward, but also, like, kind of competent and not at the same... It's weird, and it's interesting, and it's full of active characters that keep doing things. <laughs> and that's what I love about Exalted. That, mm-hmm. That's my take. Yeah, so my intake about Exalted, as little as it is... So, to give a brief summary of my uh, idea of Exalted, I played for around three months, only third edition. I know nothing about second or first. So all my experience is coming from learning about 3rd Edition. What I really love about Exalted 3rd Edition is the setting itself. The system has its flaws, but the setting, good lord, I love it. I have taken tons of things from the creation, the world of creation, and fit it into all of my campaigns because it's so good. Like, it's just a setting to engross yourself for hours. It is really cool learning about the West, learning about the South, learning about all the different directions. And to get more system-wise, I really love the combat system because, like, you have to do weathering attacks until, like, you do this final massive blow, which is a decisive attack. It's kind of like in Dragon Ball, where, you know, like, the characters just keep on punching each other until they do, like, that one massive punch, which is totally kill the other person. And it just really makes you feel powerful. The, uh, mm-hmm. what they were going for with Exalted Combat, I also really like. Yeah. Uh, like, the idea of it is cool. It's like, you, you have a bunch of little attacks that wear people down, and then you have big attacks that just blast people away. It's, also decrease their initiative. Yeah, it, it's a very anime style of fighting, and I do like that as a concept. Yeah, and, there, and, in, and Exalted isn't really all about combat. There's social. There is a system for social combat, which is really cool. Um, and what you said earlier in Slink, character creation, oh my god. <laughs> it is probably the best character creator. I the best rules for character creation I've seen, better than Godbound, in my opinion. Yeah, it, I, I agree it with really that. Really does. The thing is, it's fun. To, yeah, it's it's super fun to just randomly make a character and in third edition. Good lord, there are so many play styles. Yeah, like you can just like just working with Solars. Okay, you could make hundreds of characters, mm-hmm. and most of them would be different. Like you you have so much options and possible creativity and weird stuff you can do and then if you bring in different splats like uh, dragon blooded lunars by the way right now like as of right now uh we only have access to dragon blooded lunars and uh solars yeah which we're just waiting for all the exigence and stuff no but like i always love that if you can just pick a direction 
and stay there for multiple campaigns, stay there for dozens of campaigns. And the best advice I've ever been given was if you're going to do a campaign, pick a direction and stick with it. Oh yeah, really. definitely. Even just pick a region. Because then you can get attached to the land. You can you can make a kingdom. And what's the point of making a kingdom if you're just going to leave the kingdom to follow some adventure? Like, if I make a kingdom, I want to mm -hmm. stay there. That's my kingdom. This is my piece of the world. And I love that the game kind of lends itself to that idea. It encourages you to carve out a spot of the setting for your own. No matter what, you, like, no matter what your character concept is, they're probably going to want a home, a place. <laughs> like, yeah. Even if you're playing like a pirate game in the West, you you still like can have your little pirate cove city that you go to sell all of your ill-begotten games, and <laughs> and you can have your little fleet of pirate ships that people in the setting learn about because you know the super god is piloting a pirate ship. Oh God, run away! Like <laughs> like, like once a sailing focused got uh, a sailing focused solar gets into the sea with his boat, people are going to realize that something weird is happening when the super god shows up. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So you guys are really selling and me on I the West, by the way. <laughs> and I think that's why I really love Exalted, is because I don't get stale from it. I never... I, I don't think I'll ever get stale from Exalted, because I get, I get stale by a lot of things. But with Exalted, since the setting is so vast and just so large in itself... I can just pretty much play here until I die. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no rush, so, my friend. <laughs> just so uh, you listeners know, um, me and Ark have been preparing a West game for a while now. So we personally tend to like really hype up the West because it's a place we <laughs> like. Like it's the part of the setting we know the most about. Yeah. So like the funny thing is. I know, like, about the Lintha and about all sorts of lore associated with the West. I have no idea about what's in the <laughs> South or North or East at yeah, all. Yeah, because like, I was... I'm like, hey, Jer, would you like to try... Sure. What area? Well, I'm thinking this area, and I think it was, like, the Blessed Isle. Yeah. <laughs> and I start listing off, and it was, like, the West. Pirates. Like, uh, water. And he's like, that one. Pick that one. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the West gets some flack because it's just a big chunk of water and then basically Japan uh, at the far side. If if not so much the culture, that it just it's just a string of islands. There's not a lot of landmass compared to the rest of the world, and so people say, well, there's not a lot to do out there because water campaigns are boring. But water campaigns can be interesting if you really focus on the exploration, and maybe take a, mar a green marker and just stipple islands everywhere in the west draw some coral reefs in just there's so much stuff that can go on out there and i'm excited to either hear about it or barge my way into your all's game somehow <laughs> oh <laughs> feel free to barge your yeah, way I'm going in. i love i love character just like we said character creation now i know that we're dropping a lot of proper nouns like we're like lintha and this and that um Stay tuned, and in future episodes, we definitely want to go in depth on what these proper nouns are. Like, what is the West? What is the South? What yeah, are so? If, if I say like, oh, my character's from Chiaroscuro, that's a city, and there's lore about it, and we want to tell you about it. So, to describe the proper nouns that I just used, just briefly for listeners, uh, the West is Pirateville. It's it's a bunch of water, there's boats and ships and islands and there's pirates and there's like people. It, it's like the place you go to have pirate and ship based campaigns. That's that's the general idea. And in it, there's these guys called the Lintha who, again, cutting a very long story short, are basically demon blooded. Like they, they have a little bit of demon in them. And so they're kind of weird and creepy looking. But then there's the Lintha purebloods, which are basically just demons. And the Lintha Purebloods hate the Lintha because the Lintha are kind of idiots. And the Lintha Purebloods are pretty evil. Or, well, e evilish. It depends <laughs> on the Lintha, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's close enough. I, I, I'll sit you guys down and I'll tell you the story of the Lintha. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot. To understand. 
I, I am definitely <laughs> almost as ignorant as you are on the full lore of Exalted. I, I am. I have a very limited understanding of the setting mm. because yeah. even though, like, in preparation for this episode, I spent several hours reading up about certain parts. I'm sure I've already gotten things wrong. <laughs> I'm sure I've already misinterpreted things. But that's okay. I know I have. So, so <laughs> even if the person who are running the the game, who, even if the person who is running the game misinterpret something it's fine it doesn't really change anything yeah it's like <laughs> it's the the tone and the feeling of exalted matters more than like being highly detail correct because by god if you try to get everything correct about the lore you're going to have a job yeah like <laughs> you have a career now because yeah. i could read for literal weeks and not fully understand this setting it is like that massive their buddy of mine online say that He's been like studying this system for around two or three years, and he still hasn't gotten like, like the basics of it. Yeah, people have written, uh, I want to say, dissertations about the Yozi and the Primordials, and like the changes that happen between them. Like, it, it's it it really does get into uh, some high concept uh, philosophical grounds. That's very interesting to look yeah. at, and I, I love talking about it. Obviously, and hello, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> And it really is super cool because, like, if there's something that interests you in the setting, anything at all, you can hyper zoom in on it and just really beat out so much information and so much, like, little gritty nitty details that most settings would skip over. Like, you could decide, okay, I want our characters to kind of be focused around collecting and finding Dragon Kings. Uh, by the way, for those of you that. that you know, new to the setting, Dragon Kings are basically these uh, lizard people who used to be allies of the Solars back in the day, and most of them are dead now. They're pretty <laughs> limited in number. We'll, and... do, we'll do an episode on them. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's really hard to, like, give specific examples of Exalted because every single little detail about Exalted deserves its own episode mm -hmm. because there's so much to dig through. Like, every Exalt type probably should have its own episode tons of the enemies should have their own episode tons of places need their own up we could literally do an exalted podcast every week and i don't think within our natural lifespans we would cover every topic there is to cover about exalted it it's that and it's so deep that once you get into it it becomes hard to like quickly summarize to new people because there's so much that we need to go over as a baseline before we can talk about some of the higher concept stuff yeah yeah that's why like, i i try i try to just narrow it down to you're a big hero in a world that has other big heroes sprinkled around but the world is so big and so in need of heroes that it's gonna be a while before you start rubbing elbows with them and even when you can it's so big it takes you so long to get to where they are and for them to get to where you are that it can almost feel lonely, and I love that. You know, why, why isn't somebody else going to come and solve this problem? Well, because they're not here. They don't even know you're here. This city hasn't had outside communication for, you know, three or four generations. You're alone out here. Go handle it. Yeah, and that's, like, so cool. It's such a cool element is... One of the things, one of the things that at first you'll think is a pretty big issue in Exalted at first is the number of Exalted. There are a lot of Exalted. There's more than a hundred Solars, a hundred Siderials. That there's a lot of them, and you would think that that would mean the setting would be kind of chock full of Exalted. It's actually not because Exalted is such a massive place. It's like I say, well, there's five hundred of this group. Think about it like this: there's seven billion people on the planet right now. 500 is a drop in the bucket. And the Exalted setting has more people than is on Earth right now. Because it's truly massive. I, I don't even... I can't even properly explain how big the setting is in a pure size sense. Uh, but to put it simply, I it would take you years to walk from one side of the setting to the other. Like, it would be a full-on Journey to the West style epic to travel on foot from one place to another in the setting. Yeah. Even going through heaven would take forever if you didn't have a way to get around. 
but you could enter it through a heavenly gate and come out elsewhere in creation. But heaven is also almost the size of creation. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, listeners, if you want to go with something more crazy, you also have several different dimensions worth of <laughs> setting. You have heaven. Uh, I believe it's called y Yushan. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. Okay. You have heaven which basically it's where all of the gods do their job and like the celestial bureaucracy very, by the way very uh very asian mythos type mm -hmm. thing there very, yeah. yeah it's very cool uh they're all doing their jobs and the gods are all doing their jobs by the way solars kind of like spook a lot of gods because like your average god actually isn't going to hold up to a solar very well like or any god bound like not nah, i did it again <laughs> uh oh <laughs> Welcome to I the God Bound Podcast. But basically, like, yeah, there's, like, the god of war, or the goddess of war. And, yeah, she'll probably kick your teeth in, because she's, like, one of the most powerful entities in the setting. But, like, your average god, you're probably going to be able to just grab him and beat him to death. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with a ton of things. Like, yeah. there's a lot of entities in Exalted that you can just beat to death if you don't like. There are whole charm trees yeah. dedicated to it. There, there's all this cool stuff. There, there's all these cool stories and cool people. Like, th there's all these, like, crazy stuff you can do. Like, like, you can just introduce characters that are so aberrant in any setting that they normally wouldn't work, and they just fit in. Like, you, you know, Exalted's a place where you can just be a man-bear pig guy. <laughs> and no one's gonna, like, yeah, people will get freaked out by it, but it probably exists. The wild's a thing. People... Go, go nuts and mutate that happens like pretty much any concept you can think of could probably hypothetically exist somewhere within exalted yeah like i said there's there's so many different play styles so many different setting elements to just be engrossed in it yeah so like uh so you know we, we just spent about an hour talking about how well, all all the ideas that we've had for exalted and just excitedly chattering away so if there's like one thing that you take away from this it's the fact that the Exalted setting is a great source for building a story around. You can just take a chunk of it, set it down, and uh, build on top of it. Tell whatever story you want. It, it does not matter. And I always find it difficult to not hop in as soon as somebody says, hey, let's play Exalted, because there is just so much you can do, and it, you can almost do anything, to the point where I've begun to basically play Exalted in any game that I'm playing by just making my character a really big hero however I can. You know, that's that I, I think that that's made gaming even more fun for me because, you know, anybody can be a jerk and anybody can be a pushover, but, you know, it, it takes some effort to be, to be virtuous. Exalted is a dream. It, it gives you all of the tools you need in a very precise way to play characters of greatness ca characters who aspire to greatness and who become great it gives you the ability to have moments that you can't have anywhere else mm -hmm. and i think that's special i think that's something that we need to remember exalted for because it's kind of the nucleus of this demi genre <laughs> we have going of god games now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that despite everything else we're going to say in the next episode, I think we need to still be thankful that Exalted happened because none of this would have happened if it didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can play the most goodest, most pure to heart character, but you can also play the most evilest human being ever alive. Yeah. And I think that that's something cool, and that's something we shouldn't forget. Mm -hmm. So this has been the Pod Podcast Cast. I'm Ark. I'm Jarrett. And I'm Insuling. And thanks for watching.